Hello and welcome to Oil for the Journey. My name is Sunny. I'm your journey reader for today. We are in the book of Revelation. We are reading chapter 16 through 18. Yes, <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, just grateful for this opportunity that we have to be in God's word. I want to remind you all that we are following the Bridges for Peace, Ignite the Truth Bible Reading Plan. Go ahead and sign up. It is never too late. Yes, we are in the book of Revelations right now, but next week we will be back in the book of Genesis. <laughs> We're starting all over, just starting from the beginning to the end and asking God to speak to us, to teach us, to instruct us, to counsel us. If you lack if you feel like you lack any good thing, this is the place to start because the scriptures even tell us that we lack no good thing. So this is a time to get with God, draw near to him, and he will draw near to you. Thank you for being here this morning. Let's go ahead and get started. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is yes and amen. Your word is truth. It is the lamp for our feet and the light for our path. It instructs us. Um, it illuminates dark places in our life when we're confused, when we're angry, when we're tired, when we're sad, when we're depressed, when we're disappointed. God, your word is life. Ooh, we thank you, God. And I pray that even in today's reading, God, I thank you that today's daily bread will be life to every reader, to every hearer, God, to each person who is desiring to just draw near to you, God, and to live for you, God. And I thank you for preparing the hearts of those who um, have yet to accept you, God. And I thank you that this word will be encouragement to them, even as, or encouragement also to others who are seeking to be a light wherever you have placed them, God. We pray Lord, salvation for their family and their friends. We come into agreement in the name of Jesus because we know, God, that it is not your will for any man, male or female, to perish, but for all to come to repentance. And we thank you, God. We thank you for being our Redeemer, our friend, our lover of our souls. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Revelation 16. Then I heard a mighty voice from the temple say to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out on the earth the seven bowls containing God's wrath. So the first angel left the temple and poured out his bowl on the earth and a horrible malignant sores broke out on everyone who had the mark of the beast and who worshiped his statue. Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became like the blood of a corpse, and everything in the sea died. Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs, and they became blood. And I heard the angel who had authority over all water saying, You are just, O Holy One, who is and who always was, because you have sent these judgments. Since they shed the blood of your holy people and your prophets, you have given them blood to drink. It is their just reward. And I heard a voice from the altar saying, Yes, O Lord God, the Almighty, your judgments are true and just. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowls on the sun, causing it to scorch everyone with its fire. Everyone was burned by this blast of heat, and they cursed the name of God who had control over all these plagues. They did not repent of their sins and turn to God and give him glory. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom was plunged into darkness. His subjects ground their teeth in an anguish, and they cursed the God of heaven for their, plain, for their pains and sores. But they did not repent of their evil deeds and turn to God. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great Euphrates River, and it dried up so that the kings from the east could march their armies toward the west without hindrance. And I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs leap from the mouths of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. They are demonic spirits who work miracles and go out to all the rulers of the world to gather them for battle against the Lord on the great judgment day of God the Almighty. Look, I will come as unexpectedly as a thief. 
Blessed are all who are watching for me, who keep their clothing ready so they will not have to walk around naked and ashamed. And the demonic spirits gathered all the rulers and their armies to a place with the Hebrew name Armageddon. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a mighty shout came from the throne in the temple, saying, It is finished. Then the thunder crashed and rolled, and lightning flashed, and a great earthquake struck the worst, since people were placed on the earth. The great city of Babylon split into three sections, and the cities of many nations fell into heaps of rubble. So God remembered all of Babylon's sins, and he made her drink the cup that was filled with the wine of his fierce wrath. And every island disappeared, and all the mountains were leveled. There was a terrible hailstorm, and hailstones weighing as much as 75 pounds fell from the sky onto the people below. They cursed God because of the terrible plague of the hailstorm. Revelation 17. One of the seven angels who had poured out the seven bowls came over and spoke to me. Come with me, he said, and I will show you the judgment that is going to come on the great prostitute who rules over many waters. The kings of the world have committed adultery with her, and the people who belong to this world have been made drunk by the wine of her immorality. So the angel took me in the spirit into the wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that had seven heads and ten horns, and blasphemies against God were written all over it. The woman wore purple and scarlet clothing and beautiful jewelry made of gold and precious gems and pearls. In her hand, she held a gold goblet full of obscenities and the impurities of her immorality. A mysterious name was written on her forehead. Babylon, the great mother of all prostitutes and obscenities in the world. I could see that she was drunk drunk with the blood of God's holy people who were witnesses for Jesus. I stared at her in complete amazement. Why are you so amazed? The angel asked. I will tell you the mystery of this woman and of the beast with seven heads and ten horns on which she sits. The beast you saw was once alive but isn't now. And yet he will soon come up out of the bottomless pit and go to eternal destruction. And the people who belong to this world, whose names were not written in the book of life before the world was made, will be amazed at the reappearance of this beast who had died. This calls for a mind with understanding. The seven heads of the beast represent the seven hills where the woman rules. They also represent seven kings. Five kings have already fallen, the sixth now reigns, and the seventh is yet to come, but his reign will be brief. The scarlet beast that was but is no longer is the eighth king. He is like the other seven, and he too is headed for destruction. The ten horns of the beast are ten kings who have not yet risen to power. They will be appointed to their kingdoms for one brief moment to reign with the beast. They will all agree to give him their power and authority. Together they will go to war against the lamb, but the lamb will defeat them because he is Lord of all lords and king of all kings. And his call and chosen and faithful ones will be with him. Then the angel said to me, the waters where the prostitute is ruling represents masses of people of every nation and language. The scarlet beast and his ten horns all hate the prostitute. They will strip her naked, eat her flesh, and burn her remains with fire. For God has put a plan into their minds, a plan that will carry out his purposes. They will agree to give their authority to the scarlet beast. So the words of God will be fulfilled. And this woman you saw in your vision represents the great city that rules over the kings of the world. Revelation 18. After this, I saw another angel come down from heaven with great authority and the earth grew bright with his splendor. He gave a mighty shout. Babylon is fallen. The great city is fallen. 
She has become a home for demons. She is a hideout for every foul spirit, a hideout for every foul vulture and every foul and dreadful animal. For all the nations have fallen because of the wine in her passionate immorality. The kings of the world have committed adultery with her because of her desires for extravagant luxury. The merchants of the world have grown rich. Then I heard another voice calling from heaven. Come away from her, my people. Do not take part in her sins, or you will be punished with her. For her sins are piled as high as heaven, and God remembers her evil deeds due to her as she has done to others. Double her penalty for all her evil deeds. She brewed a cup of terror for others. She brewed twice as much for her. She glorified herself and lived in luxury. So match it now with torment and sorrow. She boasted in her heart, I am queen on my throne. I am no helpless widow and I have no reason to mourn. Therefore, these plagues will overtake her in a single day. Death and mourning and famine. She will be completely consumed by fire, for the Lord God who judges her is mighty. And the kings of the world who committed adultery with her and enjoyed her great luxury will mourn for her as they see the smoke rising from her charred remains. They will stand at a distance, terrified by her great torment. They will cry out, how terrible, how terrible for you, O Babylon, your great city. In a single moment, God's judgment came on you. The merchants of the world will weep and mourn for her, for there is no one left to buy their goods. She bought great quantities of gold, silver, jewels, and pearls, fine linen, purple silk, and scarlet cloth, things made of fragrant, fine wood, ivory goods, and objects made of expensive wood, and bronze, iron, and marble. She also bought cinnamon, spice, incense, myrrh, frankincense, wine, olive oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle, sheep, horses, wagons, and bodies. That is, human slaves. The fancy things you love so much are gone, they cry. All your luxuries and splendor are gone forever, never to be yours again. The merchants who became wealthy by selling her these things will stand at a distance, terrified by her great torment. They will weep and cry out. How terrible, how terrible for the great city. She was clothed in finest pearl and scarlet linens, decked out with gold and precious stones and pearls. In a single moment, all the wealth of the city is gone, and all the captains of the merchant ships and their passengers and sailors and crews will stand at a distance. They will cry out as they watch the smoke ascend, and they will say, Where is there another city as great as this? And they will weep and throw dust on their heads and show their grief. And they will cry out, how terrible, how terrible for that great city. The ship owners became wealthy by transporting her great wealth on the seas in a single moment. It is all gone. Rejoice over her fate, O heaven, and people of God, and apostles and prophets. For at last God has judged her for your sakes. Then a mighty angel picked up a boulder the size of a huge millstone. He threw it into the ocean and shouted, Just like this, the great city Babylon will be thrown down with violence and will never be found again. The sound of harps, singers, flutes, and trumpets will never be heard in you again. No craftsmen, no trades will ever be found in you again. The sound of the mill will never be heard in you again. The light of a lamp will never shine in you again again. The happy voices of brides and grooms will never be heard in you again, for your merchants were the greatest in the world, and you deceived the nations with your sorceries. In your streets flowed the blood of the prophets and of God's holy people, and the blood of people slaughtered all over the world. Oof. You know, um, our brother mentioned yesterday about the imagery in the book of Revelation. But, you know, may I also encourage you that these things will come to pass. And so, Father, we pray even right now just in our getting, that we are getting understanding, that we are watching and praying even as you have spoken in your word, 
He said, look, I will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Blessed are all who are watching for me, who keep their clothing ready so they will not have to walk around naked and ashamed. So, Father, I thank you that we are staying clothed in your word. Um, We are keeping your Holy Spirit activated in our lives. We are listening. We are obeying. God, we are compelled by your love. Father God, to obey you, to have faith in you, to believe you, to live our lives for you. And I thank you, Lord, that we will not grow weary in our well-doing, Father, but that we will stand knowing that you are with us because you said you would never leave us nor forsake us, oh God. And we do have a promise, Father God, to be with you eternally, Father God, in eternity. Thank you, Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Encourage each hearer, each reader, each doer of your word, Father. And as your word is also spoken, we thank you that your word, there will be a fulfillment of your word, not just in our lives, but on this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I pray you all are just as excited as I am. <laughs> it's some it's some scary stuff, but the, the excitement comes because I know and I believe that God has already won, that his end for us is good for his children. So if you want to know more about the Lord, if you want to grow in your relationship, if you need to come into a relationship with God, but just don't know how, please feel free to reach out to us. You can email us at oilforthejourney at gmail.com. You can direct message us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. At any time, if you would like to become a reader, reach out to us because we are here to encourage each other in this walk. None of us are perfect and we need each other to survive. I'm not going to start singing the song, (laughs) but, you know, I just want to say, speak God's blessings over you all um, as you go about your day. And I thank you. I thank God that he said that you will be kept in perfect peace as your mind is stayed on him. So I thank you that all your thoughts, even pertaining to life, will lead back to him, knowing and remembering that he has a plan for you. All right. He is for you and he is for your good. All right. Love you all. Have an amazing day. God bless.